Hello everyone and welcome to my Bloodfire Ronin build guide. This is a dexterity build that utilizes the exceptional reach of the Nakiba, the swift and deadly strikes of the double slash ash four, and the fiery edge of the blood flame blade to unleash devastation upon your foes and carve your path as an unstoppable force of the samurai arts. You can embark on this adventure right from the very beginning of the game, as all the essential items are accessible early on, and I will provide you with in-depth recommendations on talismans, gear options, and character set development for both early and late game. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The weapon we are using for this build is the Nakakiba. Originally, I wanted to use the Uchi Katana for this build since it has better scaling and fewer sets requirements, but the incredible range of the Nakiba makes all the difference. It is in fact the longest katana in the game. This extended reach allows us to strike enemies from a safe distance without risking getting too close. I particularly love the Nakiba's running R2. It's a thrust attack with an exceptional range that allows us to attack enemies before they have a chance to retaliate. Despite its long range, it attacks at the same speed as the Uchi Katana, which is great. Overall, it is an incredible katana that is ideal for any such effect build, especially bead since it comes with passive hemorrhage buildup like most katanas. You can obtain the Nakiba after completing the Bloody Finger Hunter Yura questline. However, this might take some time to complete, so to obtain the Nakiba from the very beginning of the game, head to the Mirkwater Cave in Limgrave where you will get invaded by a red spirit. Yura will automatically appear short after to aid you in battle. After defeating the invader, head north of that location and you will find Yura. Defeat him to obtain the Nakiba. The Asha 4 you are using for this build is double slash. When activated, it performs two slashes side to side. Then activating the weapon skill again will perform three more quick slashes and the last activation will perform a final overhead slash. If this Asha 4 seems familiar, it is because it is the same Asha 4 as the Rivers of Blood Katana, Corpus Piler. But you can also find it on the Serpent Bone Blade Katana. Three things I really love about this Asha 4. Firstly, its initial attack is fast, allowing you to catch enemies that are about to attack you or quickly follow up with the Asha 4 after dodging. And certainly the Nakiba's reach contributes to this advantage. Additionally, it has great recovery time, enabling you to roll away from danger during its use or seamlessly transition into regular katana movesets. Lastly, thanks to its successive attacks, you can apply almost any status effect like bleed or frost with a single use of this Asha 4. Although it consumes little to no AP, its stamina consumption is relatively high compared to other katana skills. This means managing your stamina is crucial when utilizing this Asha 4. You can obtain the double slash Asha 4 quite early in the game from Celia Town of Sorcery. It drops by a teardrop scarab located on a large root. If you got too close, it will teleport to another location, but you can use any ranged weapon to quickly take it out. Since I wanted to make a bleed build, I was quite torn between using either the Blood Affinity or the Arcane Affinity on the Nakiba. The Blood Affinity offers the high speed build up, while the Arcane Affinity would provide less but better attack power overall. But in the end, I decided to go with the Keen Affinity and the Blood Flame Blade Incantation. This combination will not only grant the highest attack power, but also achieves a bleed build up that is nearly as efficient as a bleed affinity. The Blood Flame Incantation is a powerful weapon buff that not only adds fire damage that scales with face, but also a unique blood loss build up effect on your weapon. So, what do I mean by unique? When using a bleed weapon, the bleed build up starts to diminish immediately after each attack. This means you need to repeatedly attack your enemy to successfully trigger the blood loss effect. However, with the Blood Flame weapon, the story is different. After attacking with the Blood Flame weapon, you not only deal the weapon damage and passive bleed up as you normally do, but also debuff your target with Blood Flame, causing the blood loss build up to continue rising and not diminish. So if you attacked an enemy and had to dodge or move away, you are still effectively building up blood loss status and sometimes trigger blood loss even though you already stopped attacking. This approach is more efficient in triggering the blood loss effect since you don't always have the luxury of sitting next to an enemy and repeatedly attacking it. Triggering the blood loss effect deals around 15% of your target maximum HP plus 100 to 200 extra damage. For bosses like Market, it's around 10% of their maximum HP. The Blood Flame Blade Incantation drops by a tear drop scarab very close to Rose Church in Lorania of the Lakes.
To apply the bot frame buff to your weapon, you need a seal. It doesn't really matter which seed you are using, as only the fire damage scales with face, which we don't have any high levels of anyway. Additionally, the bleed buildup that the buff provides does not scale with either arcane or the seed upgrade, which means you can use a non-upgraded seed to buff your weapon and you will not notice any difference from a fully upgraded one. I was using the finger seed, but ideally you want to use the dragon communion seed because it has zero weight and we already have the stats requirements to use it. In order to apply the blood flame blade, the weapon must have a physical affinity, like keen, quality, or heavy. Keen affinity will offer the highest attack bar while one-handing than a keeper, up until a certain level, but I will get into that in more detail in the stats section. Initially, physical affinities like keen could be applied using the iron web blade obtained from Stoneville Castle. However, the double slash ash four conveniently provides the keen affinity without the need for the iron web blade. Now it comes down to which style you will adapt when playing this build. The first play style is two-handing the Nakiba and rely on single katana movesets and double slash ash4 most of the time. The other play style is dual wielding another katana like the Uchi katana, so you have the Nakiba in one hand and the Uchi katana on the other hand and utilize the dual wielding movesets. This is a better approach for status build up play style since you can add blood or cold affinity on the Uchi katana and this would allow you to activate those status effects more efficiently on your target. However, there is no right and wrong here, and it really comes down to your preferred play style. One thing to keep in mind is that the status build-up advantage that comes with dual wielding another weapon received a heavy nerf in batch 1.07. It is still the better option for any status effect build, but not as strong as it once was prior to batch 1.07. For the Uchi Katana Affinity, you can either go with Bleed or Cold, I chose code because this is a dexterity build with very little arcane investment and you need to hit the arcane breakpoint of 45 to make bleed affinity shine. Triggering frostbite causes the target to suffer 7 to 10% of their maximum HP in damage and take 20% increased damage from all sources for 20 seconds. During that time, the target is immune to any further frost build up. However, this effect immediately expires if the target receives any fire damage. And since we are using the Blood Flame Blade, which adds fire damage to our main weapon, you can continuously apply and remove Frostbite to maximize the percentage based damage that comes when triggering Frostbite. For ranged options, you can use any type of bow, like Black Bow with Blood Bone arrows to apply bleed status from distance, although it is more convenient to use Cookeries. They deal physical damage that scales with dexterity and strength, and has very high bleed buildup that can be improved with Arcane. You can buy an unlimited amount from the Nomadic Merchant next to Castle Moon Rampart Site of Grace in Weeping Peninsula. Although, since I was using the dual katana setup, I attached the Stormblade Ash 4 on the Uchi katana and used that to resolve my ranged conflicts. It is an incredible Ash 4 with medium range but great damage, and above all, it is very spammable and cheap to use. If you want to enhance your gameplay with powerful buffs, you might want to consider using Rallying Standard. This is the strongest buff in its category, offering a 20% increase to your overall damage as well as damage negation for 30 seconds. Although, you will need 24 strengths to use Commander's Standard Halberd to gain this buff. Another option is to use the Golden Bow Ash 4. It's a lesser buff than Rallying Standard, but doesn't require any SAS investments. Alongside, you can use the Blood Boil Aromatic to increase all your physical damage done by 30% and maximum stamina by 20% for 1 minute. This is an incredible buff that stacks with rallying standard, but it requires farming some materials, which can be a turn off for some people, myself included. Instead, you can use flame granting strengths to increase both physical and fire damage by 20% for 30 seconds. This also affects the weapon's fire damage granted by pot flame incantation. Your buff rotation should be drinking your wonders flask, then blood boil aromatic if you have one. After that, use commander standard or golden bow ash four. Then apply Blood Frame to your weapon. If you are not using Blood Boil Aromatic, use Flame Grant Me Strengths after the Blood Flame Blade. One crucial talisman in our arsenal is Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. It boosts our attack bar relative to the number of successive attacks we land, and it has three tiers of attack power: 6%, 8%, and 13%. The more rapidly we strike our enemies, the higher the damage will be. However, the bonus will gradually decrease if we slow down our attacks. 
Millicent's prosthesis behaves exactly like rotten wings toward the insignia, but also raises our dexterity by plus 5. The only problem is that you can only obtain one or the other per playthrough by completing Millicent questline. There are two reasons to choose Millicent's prosthesis for your first playthrough. First, you can obtain Millicent's prosthesis quite early in the game by completing Father Gary's quest. Unlike Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, where you have to complete Millicent's entire quest chain to obtain it. If you want to know how, I will leave a link in the description. The second reason is that you can bear Millicent's prosthesis with Winged Sword Insignia, which is the lesser version of Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. However, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia does not stack with its lesser version. We are also using Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman, which increases attack power by 20% for 20 seconds when you trigger blood loss. Shard of Alexander to improve weapon skills like Double Slash and Stone Blade by 15%. Up until obtaining the Shard of Alexander, use Radagon's Sword Seal, which adds plus 5 to Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity. There are other viable options, but these were the ones I felt essential for this build. For the Flask of Wonders Physic, use Dexterity Not Crystal Tear to raise your Dexterity by plus 10 for 3 minutes. Alongside, use Green Burst Crystal Tear to improve your summoner recovery speed for 3 minutes. Replace Dexterity Not Crystal Tear with the Sony Crack Tear as soon as you obtain it from the Consecrated Snowfield. It behaves exactly like Millicent's prosthesis and Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. For the armor, I use the White Mask along with Ronan's armor and gauntlets, as well as the Bull Goat Greaves. Together, you would achieve over 51 boys, which is important so you don't get easily staggered by most attacks while performing with this build. The White Mask increases your attack bar by 10% for 20 seconds, similar to Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman. Sometimes I like to take the White Mask off and replace it with the Bandit Mask because I like the way it looks with Ronan's armor. For the early game, you can use Land of Freeze set with Skaden Armor. I love the look of this set, but I would love to hear your fashion options for this build. The most optimal starter class for this build is the Hero class, but I chose the Samurai class because they start with the Land of Freeze Armor set and the Uchi Katana. Also, make sure to check my early game starter guide. It is a well-optimized route with plenty of useful resources, and you can use it to upgrade the Nakiba to plus 19, without having to fight anything along the way. At level 50 you should have around 15 points in vigor, 15 in endurance, 19 in strength, 35 in dexterity, 15 in face, and 10 in arcane. 15 in vigor might seem a little too low, but keep in mind we are using Radagon's sword seal for the early game. Also make sure to activate Godric's great rune after defeating Godric for the temporary plus 5 to all your stats. We don't need to invest in mind attribute at all, since Double Slash and Storm Blade are extremely cheap to use. Endurance is a crucial stat for this build, and 15 is enough for your early game, along with the Green Burst Crystal Tear for high stamina recovery rate. You don't need 19 points in strength unless you are planning to use Commander's Standard Halper to gain its powerful buff. If you are going to use the Golden Vow Ash 4, you can deduct 6 points and invest them in other areas like Dexterity. Dexterity is our main source of damage, and having 35 along with Radagon's Sword Seal and Melisand's Prosthesis is plentiful at this point. You only need 12 face to use Blood Fame Blade, but I added the extra 3 in case you wanted to use Flame Grant Me Strength or any of the Dragon Communion incantations like Rotten Breath. If you are planning to use the Blood Bowl Aromatic and farm the materials as I did, you can stop at 12 face. 10 Arcane to use Blood Fame Blade and Dragon Communion Seal. At level 85, you should have around 35 Vigor, 20 Endurance, and 45 Dexterity. 45 Dexterity, along with the talismans we mentioned earlier, will allow us to reach the soft cap for the Keen Nakiba, which is around 55 to 59. At level 105, you should have around 25 Endurance and 60 Dexterity. At this point, you should start working on replacing Radagon's Sword Seal Talisman, so by level 125, you can equip Shard of Alexander instead. Here are our sets at level 125, and here is our final sets at level 150. You might wonder why we didn't have a higher arcane investment since this is a bleed build. Keep in mind that arcane does improve status build up, but only if the weapon has arcane scaling like Rivers of Blood or Reduvia. But since we are using the Nakiba with the Keen Infinity, 
and Blood Flame Blade Incantation, adding more points in Arcane is a complete waste. Even the blood loss granted by the Blood Flame does not scale with Arcane. If you are curious about what should you do after level 150, I would say that you have two progression passes ahead. First, keep investing in Dexterity and then Strength until you reach level 182, and change the Nakiba from Keen to Quality F20, and then reset your stats into this. After that, keep investing in Dexterity and Strength until you reach the Hard Cap. Your second progression path is switching from the Nakiba to the Hand of Millennia Katana. It's an incredible weapon with powerful and stylish H4, and it's compatible with all the talismans and items we listed for this build. So if you ever wanted a build for your first playthrough until you obtain Hand of Millennia, this is the ideal build for this. I will likely make a separate video in the future for Hand of Millennia, but I will hardly swap any items that I already listed in this build. This concludes our Bloodfire running build. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you found this video informative and enjoyable, please don't forget to give it a like and leave a comment down below and consider subscribing for more future content. Your support means the world to me and it motivates me to continue creating better content every day. Once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.